Hey guys, what's up? Hope all of you are doing fine. Now we are continuing with the international relations series. This would be the fourth title. This would be India Bangladesh relationship. This is presented by me. Uh, those who are joining us today for the first time, we have already covered the first three titles. That is the world order, foreign policy, and India and its first neighbor. That is Nepal. Those who haven't uh, seen India and its Nepal parts, please do. Uh, I would request you to go and watch them because there I have dealt with uh, exhaustively on what pillars. Uh, should we read or what should be our uh, the what should be the focus of our reading when we try to assess or read or analyze our foreign policy with Nepal? I would not be going into details about the same topics in this video, assuming that you might have seen the India Nepal relations. If haven't, it won't. It would take hardly thirty to forty minutes. Please go and watch that first. Now, uh, the PPTs are available at issue.com. You have to just log in and follow me with our, with the publisher name of Aritya Mishra and you can download these things. And then I'll be making a separate video for those having political science and op an IR as optional subject. Uh, I might not be the authority to tell you uh, about the subject, but I'll tell you what are the sources that I refer to uh, so that you can have a better understanding of the subject. Another important feature that we are lacking friends is the feedback, whether it's positive or negative, we would definitely like to have your feedback so that how we can improve the relationship. And we would also like you to uh, share as much as possible so that as many people gets benefited from the video series. Now let's directly dive into India Bangladesh relations. Uh, as we did in the India Nepal relations, the first thing would be what to read. The most important thing still remains the current state of relations and the issues involved in India Bangladesh relations. Another important topic for 2016 and 17 would be land boundary agreement because it was signed in July 2015. But UPSC has a tendency of asking questions uh, for one, one and a half years old topics. So this becomes important, not just land boundary agreement, but its assessment of land boundary agreement together with how it is helping or it is curbing illegal migration or what needs to be done in illegal migration. So you'll have to have an assessment or evaluation of illegal migration, then a land boundary agreements and in relation with illegal trades. Uh, uh, what is the situation of human trafficking? How should India, uh, what should be the policies that India should follow to curb human trafficking? How India should use effectively SARC convention on human trafficking, so on and so forth. So I would like you to have an eye and ears on land boundary agreements and the follow up issue on this. Another important issue for 2016 and 17 would be the Tista water sharing agreement because it might be possible that India and Bangladesh signs an interim government uh, interim agreement on Tista water sharing. So this becomes a hot topic uh, for 2016 and 17. So we should understand what is the present state of Tista water relationship? Uh, what is the uh, what is the cost benefit analysis? What are the strengths weaknesses and what should India do? Another important point still remains importance of Bangladesh uh, for India and vice versa. So we'll be talking about energy security, national security, our illegal and refugee crisis, so on and so forth. Another important point would be internal politics of Bangladesh as well as of India. So how does a uh, stance of uh, West, West Bengal's uh, chief minister as well as why we need to bring a Sikkim chief minister on board with regards to Tista water sharing agreement. Then you have uh, internal politics similar to when what we talked about in India Nepal relations that is the Madhesis fighting the Bhavan Chatri so on and so forth. Here we'll talk about the battle of Begums. We'll understand who these Begums are, what are their policies and what stands do they have for India. And then we would try to assess our foreign policy from 1971 to uh, till the present date and what needs to go forward. Now, uh, we will have a quick view of our relationship. So we uh, we were uh, we were important uh, in uh, its formation in 1971. It was because of the refugee influx that India had to intervene. Then Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, who was called the Banga Bandhu, who was over the founder, fa founding fathers of Bangladesh, he was assassinated in 1975 and a military coup took over. So after the military coup, uh, our relationship was bitter and it uh, it was a nose diving kind of situation. But it started improving once democracy returned. So from uh, late 1990s, so in 1996, we have the Ganga water uh, sharing agreement. Then we had our look east policy from 1992. So Bangladesh became a key player or an important player in our foreign policy, specifically to our eastern uh, neighborhood. And then Bangladesh internal politics. I told you about that there are two power centers. Uh, these are called the Battle of Begums. So one power center is the present ruling coalition, the present ruling party that is the Awami League with Sheikh Hasina as the prime minister. Now, uh, I, I'm, I have written here that it is pro-Indian. So we'll try to assess why it is pro-Indian and how it is affecting our relationship. But uh, another important point is that since the formation of Awami League government, our relationship have been on progressive tax. We also, there has been some positive 
positive developments in our relationship. We'll try to assess these positive developments in the later parts of the videos. Another important pillar or the power pillar is the ruling coalition of the uh, Bangladesh Nationalist Party and the Jamaat e Islami fundamentalist groups. Now, this is having another uh, person as Prime Minister. Uh, she is called Khalid Azia. So, this is the second Begum. So, it is it is called Battle of Begums. That is the Sheikh Hasina versus the Khalid Azia government. So, we'll try to assess uh, their power politics. Now, this is the best way to assess uh, the power politics that we should differentiate them. So, this is on on the left side we have the Awami League. On this we have the Bangladesh Nationalist Party and the Jamaat e Islami. Now, Jamaat e Islami is a fundamentalist Islamist. Uh, political party uh, with uh, its constitution mandate saying that it wants to impose sharia it is under the rule uh, it is under the guidance of allah so on and so forth this is what the constitution of jamaat e islami says so it is a fundamentalist islamist group and this is the bangladesh national party they are the ru uh, ruling coalition but at the same time the present co the present working government is the awami league with sheikh hasina as prime minister now what is the term so post 2008 elections uh, sheikh hasina and the awami league came with a brute majority but into, uh, also in 2014 elections it is having approximately 232 seats out of 300 constituencies or 300 seats so it is having large majority but this is one of the, uh, the but this kind of relationship uh, some people say it is facing crisis of legitimacy now why it is after having 232 seats why it is facing crisis of legitimacy because the important point is that the BNP and Jamaat e Islami boycotted the 2014 elections so people say that people were not having effective choices because there was because the principal opposition party was not even participating in the elections so it is uh, facing the crisis of legitimacy the uh, issue remains that out of 300 uh, there were 157 constituencies where the uh, candidates of awami league were elected unopposed so you had in 157 constituencies you had principally no opposition and why did bangladesh nationalist party boycott the elections because it wanted an interim government because it it had an argument that uh, awami league which was post 2008 which was the uh, government uh, would would try to uh, hinder free and fair elections but uh, this was against the constitutional mandate because the constitution says that the ruling government should continue with an independent election commission it took to street protest and violence because of the jamit uh, jamaat e islami cadres and these are extremist and fundamentalist so they usually take to violence uh, that is why they are lacking political support as well now what are the policies of Awami League? It is pro-Indian policies that it helps in counter-terrorism cooperation, helping in our milit extremist militant curbing uh, act activities. It is not giving any free hand to ISI as opposed to Bangladesh Nationalist Party. It is having uh, control over the fringe elements, but these uh, are not controlled when Bangladesh Nationalist Party and jamaat e islami comes to power. It is helping in uh, curbing anti-Indian activities. It is helping in cooperation and extradition and mutual legal extradition treaties. So these are the points. That is why I was saying that India is having a progressive relationship with this. At the same time, BNP, when it comes to power, uh, jamaat e islami is a fundamentalist group. It, it has, it cozies up with Pakistan and ISI gets a free hand and our uh, counter-terrorism cooperation become, weakens. Also, what are the stands on various issues? So you have the Ama Awami League. It is going, uh, it is going ahead with war crime trials. It is even giving death penalty. Now, the uh, the the point being that most of the leaders of the war cr criminals are the leaders of Jamaat Party, Jamaat e Islami Party. So they do not uh, Jamaat e Islami not particularly wanting war crime trials, but at the same time, Awami League is going with a. Uh, war time trials and even hanging leaders of opposition parties if they are uh, if they come out to be uh, if they are uh, come out if they are becoming war crime criminals and then it is using but it is also diversifying its foreign policy it is using china japan and india at the same time so it is not just that it's having progressive relations with india it is also having progressive relations with japan and china and it is dependent on uh, Jamaat Kadar, so it becomes violent at times. What it expects from India, it wants land boundary agreement, we have given it, we will discuss in details what this was all about. Tista water agreement we will also discuss, then faster implementation of our promises. But uh, the Bangladesh Nationalist Party wants to play the China card with India. Now, what does India needs? India needs faster ground implementation, a favorable Tista water agreement. We'll understand what should be the uh, favorable agreement and a comprehensive transit agreement. We'll uh, discuss all these things in the future parts of the relationship and the cooperation in energy, conservation, illegal activities, so on and so forth. But at the same time, we also want to develop positive relations with Bangladesh Nationalist Party and across the party consensus. In the next part, we'll try to assess our foreign policy, the present state of relations and importance of Bangladesh. Thanks for watching.